At the dawn of every TV show, only one episode is produced. This is called a pilot. How did you get to be such a good pilot? If the network approves, more episodes are funded. Rejected, only one episode it remains. And that's what I'm counting down. Some of the best or worst pilots and shorts I can find yet again. It's Juice and Jam time. It's my best right. Welcome to Backspace! You're under arrest! Backspace is a receptacle for all bad ideas deleted from computers and other electronic devices! When you delete a bad idea from your computer, it ends up here. Back to Backspace, a purgatory for deleted computer files. Sort of like Reboot meets Chalk Zone. I call it Cock Zone. Who's got the cock? Patty's got the cock. But not my cock. No, sir. Patty's a human trapped in this dimension and sorts out where everything goes with her two chuckle nut partners. Subject appears to be the length of one. Uh, make that two tiny sausages plus a milk and one of those twisty things you use to close a bread bag. <laughs> I like the idea of the pilot more than the pilot itself. The episode feels sloppy and has too much going on. Let me elaborate. They open first with the introduction of the main characters in this weird looking cyber world, and then they cut to our world where this company is deleting a piece of computer art who comes to life and is sent to the cyber world. That's where they explain what this world is. It's redundant. It could have flowed better had it opened with the program's deletion and it meeting the characters and the cyber world at the same time as the audience. Not saying my way's better, there's more than one way to tell a story, but that's how I would have arranged the pilot so that it's less sporadic to me. Now, this girl Patty, I really love, not in my usual I wanna bone her type of way, but as a character, you know? She's a human trapped in this cyber world, but has such a perky, dark sense of humor. Except she's not overly perky like someone doing a bad Harley Quinn impression. She has more subtlety and sarcasm in her line delivery. And evil bad ideas are tortured briefly before they're removed from existence. Back to Backspace has a great character and an okay pilot that could use some retooling to be something great. But allow me to go on a tangent rant. I got footage of this pilot on Cartoon Network's official YouTube, but I noticed there's a ton of problems in their uploads. While the footage is in HD, it looks horrendous in motion as if they heavily compressed it to upload faster. I'm thankful Cartoon Network's official YouTube is giving us these pilots and shorts, but often something is wrong with them. Another pilot, Danger Planet, and its colors are so horrifically oversaturated and near unwatchable compared to the unofficial uploads found on YouTube years ago for the same pilot. Someday soon, we'll be shipped to Earth where humans can play with us all day long. Now that will be the life. You with me, buddy? <laughs> How little did they care when uploading this? This is disgusting. I tried my best to desaturate it, but I'm no colorist. It still looks very off with my edits. And for 12 Forever's pilot, the audio is so muffled and compressed. Like what's going on in their YouTube? Cartoon Network, double check what you're uploading. Jeez, the love for 12 is real. Jeez, the love for 12 is real. It better be, I made these guys up. It better be, I made these guys up. <laughs> What if I told you there was a kind of TV coming to VH1 that you could watch, control, or create? I'd say that sounds great, except for the VH1 part. Around 2007, there used to be this VH1 sketch show called Acceptable TV, a viewer request show where the audience at home would vote online on what were the two best skits. The winning skit got a sequel the following week while competing against a different set of skits. They were all live action, except for Mr. Sprinkles, starring a repulsive Cat in the Hat parody who may sound familiar. Hello, I'm Mr. Sprinkles. What's happening? What do you want? When it rains all day, we get stuck inside. But indoors can be fun with my Gubblesot ride! Yes, before Rick and Morty, Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland gave us Mr. Sprinkles. This is to Dr. Seuss what Rick and Morty is to Back to the Future. A demented comedy that's altogether hilarious, disturbing, and emotional. When it rains, Sprinkles likes to visit kids to have fun, only to find kids today just don't need him anymore. I'm calling 911! You don't have to do that! Ow, you're hurting me! Please! I just want to show you how to have a fun time inside during the rain! What are you doing? No! Away from my side, please! Don't shoot me! Don't shoot! Ah! 
seeing the Dr. Seuss influence, I now understand all the wordplay we hear in Rick and Morty. This isn't a pilot, but definitely an obscure enough series of shorts to mention. What I find tragic is the highest viewed upload of this on Vimeo.com is actually missing a chapter, so I'll link you all to the completed version below. And yes, I did briefly mention Mr. Sprinkles in my Rick and Morty vlog review, but that video is so outdated. I also mentioned how Mr. Sprinkles has the same plot points as The Dark Knight Rises. I can't believe director Christopher Nolan ripped this off. I'd call him a hack, but then I just remembered Zack Snyder existed! <laughs> As for more recommendations, I pressure you all to check out the 2010 film Super. It has no relation to this really, but the tone has that comedy and tragedy mix you get from Rick and Morty. It's by Troma Films and Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn, and stars Rain Wilson from The Office as an ordinary man trying to be a superhero without powers. It unfortunately came out near the same time and was overshadowed by Kick-Ass, a movie with a similar premise. I love Kick-Ass, but Super is really worth checking out too. It's a revenge fantasy that's both gruesome but sympathetic. It also has the best ending speech any superhero is given. Super 2010, Rick and Morty, and Mr. Sprinkles. Make like the FBI on my Google searches and put it on your watch list. H Hello, I I've been shot. I, I need help. I need help. No one can save you now. It's Crash Nebula. Hooray! Intergalactic scum, your reign of terror ends now. If you watched The Fairly Odd Parents, you'd notice Timmy Turner would always be watching his favorite TV show, Crash Nebula. Someone decided, let's turn the fictional TV show into a real TV show. Just age the character down to see his origins as Sprig Spivak, an ordinary Earth kid who gets enrolled into Celestial Academy, where kids train to become the hero Crash Nebula. You may have seen the pilot on TV disguised as an episode of Fairly Odd Parents, where Timmy is watching it on TV. The great thing about a new school? Nobody knows you. You can be anybody you want to be. I could be somebody different! Somebody cool! Somebody totally unafraid of the unknown! <coughs> It's a very basic high school origin story, but filled with potential and cool designs. This girl Annie and her hair is such a unique look, and all these CG effects still look great. This really was an expensive and ambitious pilot. And I do love any space adventure with a triumphant score that may or may not sound dangerously close to Star Wars. Who knows why Nick didn't want this show. It was made roughly the same time as Danny Phantom, so maybe Nick didn't want two high school cartoons about a fumbling superhero in training. And think, it was 2004, 5, how many high school crime fighting cartoons were on TV? They were probably afraid of the oversaturation, or at least that's what I'm thinking. According to the Fairly Odd Parents Wikia, a source that may not be fully credible but worth noting, creator Butch Hartman and Steve Marmel attempted to pitch this again as a live action movie, but the the premise of a school for heroes in training was very similar to the movie Sky High. After that, any Crash Nebula talk fizzled out. Okay, it's stock controlled, so if I think fly, I should be able to... But that is a cool idea to make a real TV show from a fake one. So I ask you all, what TV show within a TV show should they make into a real series? Stuff like Sick Sad World, Wayne's World? We never caught a glimpse of it, but in the underappreciated Dan Versus, there was a cartoon he'd watch called Population Controlled Johnny. No idea what it was about exactly, we never saw it, but the very name inspires some crazy ideas. Too many people, not enough bullets.
Buff class is such a fat load of tripe. Come on, let's get to the bench. Mama's jonesing. I normally stay away from talking about online shorts and pilots, but Becky Prim was requested so much, and how could I resist her? She is a pissed off high school girl who sounds like my little sister Emily, except Becky would hate people like Emily and anyone else around her. Ugh, I'm so sick of this wacky land bullshit. It smells like a library and no one blinks. How the hell did I even get here, Lizzie B? This particular episode has Becky die and become a ghost to haunt the popular girls in school. But the series, if it were to become a series, would focus on Becky alive and hating high school in general. Imagine if you will, Daria went from grumpy to fucking dumb with this shit and was drawn into a Ren and Stimpy episode. <laughs> Bless your silly, stupid heart. Yeah, it's an unfinished animatic, yet the poses and expression really bring it to life. You can tell by looking at these characters who they are and what they roughly sound like. A nerd, a prep, a wallflower, and a bitch. Their voices are so... I don't know how to describe it. It's all so precise and ASMR-like. Sometimes you just want to lollipop their throat with a gel pen. <laughs> Becky Prim was uploaded online to gauge if enough people liked it. The creator, Carl Hadrika, has several ideas for cartoons he could pitch, but wanted to see if this particular one is worth pursuing any further. So if you want the chance at more Becky Prim, follow the links below to the upload on the creator's channel. This really reminds me of how regular shows started, just as a simple, crudely animated short with minimal animation. Uh, yeah, this is uh, getting a little weird for my tastes. With good enough dialogue or posing, it can be enough to convey the idea of your cartoon. Nobody watched Beavis and Butthead for the animation. People thought it was funny. The ironic thing is, you don't need good animation to make a funny cartoon. You can compensate with your other skill sets. Wow, Becky, you sure are hardcore. Yeah, I'm pretty much the real deal, LO. Okay, gotta go, Mom. Hey, later, dudes. Call me anytime on my cell phone. Kitty Bobo. I don't know what it is, but any sort of urban city life cartoon seems to never last long despite how chill they are. Mission Hill, MTV's Downtown, and the single episode pilot for Cartoon Network's Kitty Bobo. It's a slice of life for a high school or college age group of friends living in the city. The only episode focuses on the title character's brand new cellular phone. I'm riding my bike and... Using my cell phone, you're crazy. This was 2001. The phone model may be outdated, but the problems are still current. And yeah, you are hearing Dante Bosco voicing Kitty Bobo. You gotta know the time. If you had a cell phone that year, you were the king. You were Tits McGee. And you had to wait until after 9 p.m. to get free minutes. Unlimited data plans weren't standard. You wanna play a game on your phone? Angry Birds? Nah, son. We had Snake. Snake. I'm the fucking best. This was part of Cartoon Network's Big Pick Weekend, a promotion they used to do yearly in which they showcased TV pilots. The audience at home would vote for the winners, which were how Kids Next Door, Megas XLR, and Billy and Mandy got their shows. Kitty Bobo lost to Kids Next Door. Yeah, check this out. Word. This is the bomb. Listen. In 2006, there was a second attempt at a show for Kitty Bobo. No pilot, but there was a slideshow released online pitching a new variant of the character. This time, Bobo is 12 years old and there's more emphasis on him being a cat raised by dogs in a mostly dog society. That could make for some good stories relating to anyone who felt isolated by their differences. Nothing came from the pitch and the creator Megan Dunn formed Dynamic Animation, a company that does graphics for commercials and apps. They tried but failed to kickstart another pilot, Chloe and the Stars, about a rock band in space. Oh, excuse me, Graffiti. I have a phone call on my cell phone. I think now Cartoon Network should look into Kitty Bobo again. Maybe they worry kids won't relate to a story about someone in college, but it worked out for regular show. Also, non-human characters like Mordecai and Rigby or Spongebob to me are ageless. Them doing immature stuff while having responsibilities doesn't look so weird. I don't see Spongebob as an adult or kid, really. He's a sponge to me. And I guess the same would work out for Kitty Bobo. Urban college cartoons are something we just don't get enough of, yet I love so much. That bounce on his Italian leather sofa. This Friday, 
It's the Cartoon Garden Friday's Big Pick Weekend. It's time once again for you to pick who will be our next Cartoon Cartoon series. All of your favorite CCF stars will be showing clips of this summer's premiere premieres. And if that weren't enough, join I Am Weasel for the Big Pick Show, featuring all of the premiere premieres in their entirety. Oh, did we mention that the premiere of Grim and Evil, our newest cartoon cartoon, and the winner of last year's Big Pick is leading off the weekend? Well, it is. The Cartoon Cartoon Friday's Big Pick Weekend starts this Friday at 8, right here on Cartoon Network. Phew.